Hello, it's Rod, Lindsay, Danielle and Bernard from The Right Note here. We know it's very hard getting by without us while we're on a little break. So right here is another of the top five albums of 2017 so far. And it's me. Um, the thing I find about the way that I listen to music and I guess the way that a lot of music is consumed at the moment is it's hard to remember albums. Mm -hmm. And so you, you know, you're looking back through your, your Spotify lists or your, or your just albums that you've emailed to people. And that's why shows like The Right Note are so good because you can go back and look it's at the so albums true. you've listened to and go, you know, oh yeah, I remember, I've loved this, I've loved this, I've loved this. And I think that's why a lot of our albums that we are going to put in our top five so far are from albums that we reviewed on this show. Mm. So I'm going to start with one that we haven't reviewed on this show. In fact, it's not even <laughs> out yet. In fact, I don't think it's even finished yet, depending on when we listen to it. But I've heard pretty much all of it, and that's uh, by Katie Baker. And she's my friend, yes, and I do play in her band occasionally, yes. But the music that she's written uh, using riffs that her father, who's this old Brisbane blues guy, just played on an old guitar into his old Nokia phone and then given to her wow. after a period of estrangement between the two of them. Yeah. And then they've been, on top of those, there's been beats and brass and amazing lyrics and vocals put on top of them. It's just such a weirdly captivating and strange combination. It works so well. So I kind of, I want to tell everyone about this album, but it, there's only two songs that have been released. And it's just, I, there's all these other songs and I'm like, just just hang out. They're, they're going to come out and they're going to be awesome. So that's, that's why it's number five. Um, number four is Father John Misty's Pure Comedy, not just for the title track, which is amazing. <laughs> I still listen to it most days when I want to hear that feeling of a perfectly written pop song that you would play to describe all of mankind's failings in one perfectly written pop song. But also when we were reviewing it, we, you were actually saying you were quite worried for, for I'm concerned for, Josh. for him. His name isn't Josh. Josh, yeah. Josh. Josh Tillman. Josh Tillman. Because he feel, you know, he, he's kind of lost faith in the human race mm. and himself, and he's, he's got quite self-destructive. But for me, that fills me with this energy of, yeah, we, you know, like it's, it's something music to listen to as the world burns and the world is burning and we're listening and that, uh, maybe it's a strange, perverse pleasure that I get out of it, mm. but I just, yeah, I, I still love listening to that album and, you know, smiling smugly as we destroy ourselves. <laughs> um, number three isn't Nadia, but it was quite close. It's Holly Throsby's album, mm. which was uh, like, I, the confidence that Holly has in her voice now just, just made me absolutely just, yeah, really, I was reading her book at the same time as well. So the, the stories in the book are very different to the stories in the songs, but just sort of being all encompassed in this, in this world of Holly Throsby, um, yeah, I, it's something that I like quite a lot. Uh, number two is an album that has only just come out, depending on when you're watching this, um, and it's Tim Rogers' album, An Act of Repairs. Because as I said when we reviewed it, um, the, to me it sounds like Tim Rogers' songwriting repairs. And it got into my head and it brought me back to when I first used to follow Tim Rogers around Sydney. M my girlfriend and I at the time would literally see him at a record store and follow him <laughs> from the record store to the train station to the pub which we then weren't allowed into because we weren't old enough or whatever because I was in love with his songwriting. I, listening to the melodies on this album reminds me of the melodies on Hourly Daily or Hi-Fi Way which I then tried to steal when I tried to write songs back at that age. So yeah, it's still right up there and I'm stoked that that album exists. I still have much more listening to do to get right into it. And number one um, was a band that wasn't around back then. They probably weren't even born back then. King Gizzard's Flying Microtonal Banana, <laughs> which is still just an absolute head fuck of an album <laughs> that I love listening to so much. We saw him play at Coachella a couple of weeks ago on the live stream because I was not there, I was in my house. <laughs> and um, just the, the songs from that, the, the, they, they created entirely new instruments to play these songs. They had mm. a friend of theirs make them guitars with uh, you know, <laughs> microtonal frets so they could play them. And the fact that they've not only use them use those those modes use those scales but use them respectfully but also rockingly to you know they're not being uh you know uh, sort of scared to use those you know or, you know overly respectful they're just like this is what these notes can do let's rock with them and so yeah i it's one of those albums you just put on and are not only amazed by that album but you're just like what how are these guys gonna like the new album's surely seconds away from being released so i can't wait for it to find out what else they're going to do this year, mm. if not in future. Cool. When you you inevitably would have met Tim Rogers, yes, on your travels in a band or on the radio. Did you tell him that oh, you used to follow him around? Yeah, we've, I've had so many ridiculous conversations with Tim Rogers. Um, and there's a photo of of us in 1996, maybe 95, 
So I was 17 and I'm wearing a Jimmy Barnes Soul Deep shirt, which I changed to say Jimmy Barnes Shit Heap because I was a punk who didn't respect the amazing Jimmy Barnes back then. But yeah, and it's me just like going, oh, well, and Tim Rogers up there just going, who is this fuckwit? Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's, I, I, feel, I feel bad that, because I know that Tim kind of feels like the world kind of forgot about him in the interim, but yeah, this, yeah, I, I, I was... In, almost in love with him as my girlfriend at the time was. Right. You know, <laughs> I don't believe in those guilt free, guilt free three pieces of shit that people have in relationships. But that was like back then. Yeah, you know, if he went for either of us, that was fine. That was on the table. <laughs> I have a, a friend who uh, who worked in a record store um, when he was in a band, and Tim Rogers told me later that he used to go into that store and and be terrified of taking up the wrong thing to to my friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in case he, he he might get the the look. Mm. Uh, and in, but in fact, he was generally taking up the right stuff. But mm. he had exactly the same fe feeling about about my friend. That, you know, that this was a guy he needed to impress, mm -hmm. and um, was trying to be cool around. Was while well, probably been the opposite of cool. Just, oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! So <laughs> Tim is just like you. No, yeah. he's so much <laughs> better. That's what he's saying. So much better. He, uh, when I was that that age, the, that guy, the record store guy for me was Rayan from the Hard Ons. So he used to work mm -hmm. at um, uh, Power Station Alternative in at Miranda Fair. And I, that was me just going, oh, my God. And we'd even, like, take up hard-ons records. It's like, oh, I'll just buy this then, please. Hey, you're wink, the guy wink. from the band. <laughs> Sorry, Ray. Are you, you playing on Katie's album? No, 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 no. Otherwise, this would be editorially unsound. <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. I, I, no, I just get to play with a guitarist. Lot. She's got her dad. Her dad wrote all the guitars are played by her dad. That's and they're all all that, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I love that story. The fact that mm. he recorded them on a Nokia phone. They were estranged. I mean, oh, yeah, and it, it writes itself. It does. It does, and it's actually true. It's not just a good PR yeah, spin. And great. because they recorded on a crappy Nokia phone, all of the songs on like they actually sound like old old seventy eights or old old oh, seven yeah. inches or whatever old blues recordings because they're these cool. riffs. Yeah, it's and it's fun trying to learn how to replay them because he can't remember playing them because he's an eccentric guitarist and they've been cut up and cross, you know, remixed so many times, they don't rep in any way sound like they did originally, so yeah, you kind of, right. kind of work out how to play them. Yeah. Will the album come with a game of Snake? <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> Only available in 8-bit Nokia ringtone <laughs> mode.